Okay. Uh. Um. Uh. VTOL. V VTOL aircraft in one day. Okay. I have a meeting coming up with this. With this guy and my professor and this other guy. And I guess like just to just to show off in that meeting. And the meeting's about VTOLs, so just to show off in that meeting. I've done this before for done this before for NCSU. It's gonna be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But yeah, I'll take you guys through the whole progress process. Actually, I have a VTOL VTOL frame here already that I've worked with. I'll take you guys through the software setup, troubleshooting, and overall tuning that I have. I'm planning on doing full transition testing today, so let's see how this all works out. What I have in here is is the original Pixhawk. This is a piece of history right here, to be honest with you. I haven't, damn, I haven't seen one with this marking. You know, usually I just, I just have like these, which is like the reproduced ones, or even these, which is just like a complete clone or a copy. This one, from what I know, can't run PX4, just, just to give you an example. But either way, this is the one that we're using. Uh, let's, let's set it up, let's set it up. Calibration. I always have problems with with either Q ground control or mission planner and I always have to go in between the two and sometimes I have to go to Linux and all right okay all right shut up it's cool all right shut up circle flight mode okay okay I understand I understand long event on bros type equals two slash just recently installed Arduplane v 4.0.5 so let's get started. This video is going to be on that firmware. First, we're going to go to, let's enable the airspeed. So we're going to do ARSPD underscore, underscore, do airspeed type, and it's going to be analog. For us, it's analog because I plugged it into, so I have this set up right here. I don't have the digital one. Uh, here's my pinout. It's going to be five volts on the left. White is analog, that's in the middle, and black is ground, that's on the right side. So, you can you can see that, look at these colors, and then line them up right here. You get the idea, and it's at the ADC 6.6 .6 port. So you get, the, you get the idea, set it up like that. You, you guys are smart enough to figure it out from there. I don't know what, uh, I don't know what frame this is honestly, it looks like the wing truck, you, you guys know the wing truck? Either way, so all we have to do to get that going is airspeed sight, we set that to analog, plug that in, we're gonna write, we're gonna write to params, parameters successfully saved. Then we have to reboot it after this, but we also have to do this one other thing called Q enable. So Q quad plane, quad plane is the vertical takeoff landing side of our new plane. We're gonna do enable. We're gonna set this to one. Hit right params, this is an enable parameter. When you enable an enable parameter, what it does is it allows this whole other parameters to open up in the parameters list. Okay, so we're gonna disconnect this, we're gonna reconnect it, and you guys are gonna see that a bunch of other quad plane options are gonna be available afterwards. And now we're back on, we're gonna do Q underscore, and then now you see a bunch of other quad plane options are available. A bunch of other. Anyways, we're gonna go to quad plane frame type, and we're going to go to tail sitter 10. And we're gonna write that parameter. This is for tail sitter because we have a tail sitter aircraft. Okay, so for motor directions, this is what we need going forward. This has to spin counterclockwise. The reference frame when looking at it is when you're looking at the aircraft. This is our reference frame right here. This is our right motor and that's our left motor, our right elevon right here and our left elevon right there. So this is counterclockwise, it's going to be spinning this way and that's going to be spinning that way. And I have all that set up right here. Okay, so from here I'm going to disconnect my USB and go on telemetry because I have to do a little bit of calibration of the sensors. And excuse the mess by the way, I I'm moving tomorrow actually, I'm moving out of this house tomorrow so I'm, I'm in a bit of a rush. Okay, so we're gonna set our servos and elevons properly. I just set servo one and also I set these to 2000 and 1000 because I don't know man, I like having the extra movement if I can handle it, you know, if I can, if I can have it. This is 78 from what I remember, yeah. I like having the extra movement. It's the same reason I, I fly without expos or uh, dual rates either. I just fly straight and raw. Instead of just moving it all the way out here, I'll just, you know, move a tiny bit. I, I, like, I like that. I like that. Anyways, servo three and four are going to be blank, zero disabled, and then servo four is the same. And then for some reason, the documentation says the motors are going to be on servo five and six. I don't know why. 
but it's just the way it is. Maybe it can also work on three and four, but I'm not. I don't want to waste time and find out. So it's gonna be throttle left, from what I remember. Let me check. Okay, so this goes to the right. Okay, so that's throttle right. Let's go write that in. Throttle right is 74. Right. Okay. Servo 6 is going to be 73 from what I know. Yeah, 73. Okay, hit right params. Powered on actually. Let's try to move the sticks. Okay, I often have this problem where, you know, you set up your servos and then you pull back and then this is what happens. You pull back and this is what happens. One of these are wrong. So we're going to put the nose down and we want the servos to come up. So nose down and this one goes down. Elevon right has to be reversed. So let's go reverse that Elevon right. Servo one, let's see. 77 Elevon left, now it's servo two. Reverse one, we reverse this, write this parameter. Parameter saved. Let's see if it changed anything. So nose down, both the Elevons come up. Okay, we do left and that one comes up perfect. That's perfect, right? So stabilizer wise, everything works, but I think the radio will be wrong. So we're gonna do up, and this is wrong. And we're gonna do left. So ailerons work correctly, but elevator control doesn't. So we're gonna reverse the elevator control real quick. And we reverse that by RC, I think it's RC2 that we have to reverse. The control inputs on the radios is AETR. A is aileron, that's on channel one. Elevator, that's on channel two. Throttle, and then rudder. RC2 ops or RC2 reversed. Right params, and that's reversed. Let's see if it worked. Elevator up, that works. Left, right. Jesus, there's so much movement on that, but we like movement. Lots of movement is good when it comes to tail sitter VTOL because this is your this is your control right here. You know, this is this is how you get control. Uh, next, we have to calibrate everything. Calibrating it, you just calibrate it like it's a normal airplane. That's about it. Again, sorry for the mess that you see everywhere in the video. I think we're about ready for flight. Something incredible happened. I hope it's still here. Oh my god, I went green first try on my compass calibration. This never happens. This is incredible right here. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is. So I just went outside because I wasn't getting any GPS lock or anything like that. And I still couldn't get any GPS lock. So it's a problem with, it's a problem with that GPS module. Because I just slapped this on, the one that I knew worked and it worked just fine. But the problem with this one is the magnetometer cable is broken. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that up. Get it right the first time. I really, something inside me is really telling me to just go fly this in stabilized mode. You know, so compasses isn't necessary that much, but do it right, do it right, guys. Okay, again, sorry for the mess. That's a W. Every day I wake up, so from that flight, it does need to be trimmed down. It loves to go this way for some reason, but I think it figures it out in the eye, you know, it, it corrects itself. So I'm not going to waste any time with calibrating and whatnot. That's, that's a waste of time. Like, making sure your motors work properly is a waste of time. So I'm just going to go out to the field right now and try to do a transition test. We're out here. We have our ground station right there. Winds are looking bad. Weather's looking bad. But we're gonna go for it. So the flight plan, I've always said this and it's always the same thing. Your hover mode is good, that's solid. You try flying forward, you try transitioning, and if that doesn't work, you transition back into hover mode and you're, you're good, you're solid. That's a safety net. Generally where I want to be on the field is I like to have a lot of space behind me so I can come around fly over here and then transition so the airplane is back like this because that's your reference point is the same but I set up here whatever we'll, we'll fly like this we'll fly like this it'll be fine butter is butter you know what I mean man
It definitely landed off camera. It landed off camera, but it was it landed. Stabilized mode is very twitchy, so I'm just gonna keep it in flyby wire. In flyby wire, it flies pretty fine, but I have to turn the pitch tuning down. So let me just do that real quick. Hovering. It needs a strong look. Overall, it needs a stronger motor. That's about it. I have the new tuning things in, and we're also gonna try loiter mode. Walk with you? You guys think I can walk with you? No, I can't. I absolutely cannot. Okay, loiter mode is good. Sometimes it gets confused. We're gonna try loiter mode again. Oh my god. Look at how close this phone was to being absolutely gone. I'm absolutely gone if I heard thunder, so I think this might be a lot of Oh yeah, takeaways. There's new takeaways. Takeaways from this flight. This this really needs some tuning. I, I'm not too good at tuning myself, you know, like the, the, the basic PID tuning. Two, it needs stronger motors. Or I just need to fly it on 4S. I probably just need to fly it on 4S. And that's good. That's it, honestly. It needs to be a less windy day um, because it can barely handle the wind. You guys know how tail sitter aircraft are.